Well, good morning, Jim Sunderworth here talking to you about the Ten Commandments. We're not really into the Ten Commandments. We're just kind of setting them up right now. And we're in Exodus, the 20th chapter, if you want to read along with that. But the fact is that these laws, the thing that God says to us, you and me, is the fact these laws are, are, are laws tremendous. They're non-negotiables. As one guy said, they're, they're, these are, are, are not suggestions. They are commands, commands of God, especially... Uh, especially for the children of Israel and especially for us today. Now, back in the day of, of, uh, of Israel, they had the moral law and they had a ceremonial law and they had dietary law. The Old Testament is made up of these three sections, the moral law, the ceremonial law, and the dietary law. But when, but when Jesus came on the scene, he said, you know, these laws, they had 613 laws, 613 laws that that controlled uh, the moral the ceremonial and the and the dietary laws and so what the Ten commandments did was kind of summarize them and bring them down well jesus comes along and he said now look as far as the dietary law is concerned um and as, as far as the ceremonial law i am the ceremony i am all that that you know, i mean if you read through all the ceremonies jesus uh, is right in the middle of all that and we celebrate him we our ceremony is jesus that's who we celebrate as far as dietary when Jesus said, it's not what goes in the body. What you put in the body goes through and comes out. He said, it's not. It's not. He said, you know, remember Peter when he had to go um, speak and, and actually introduce Christianity to the Gentiles. Um, they, God told him, he said, all food is on the top of the uh, on the top of the, the roof. He gave them that that uh, um, the vision, and he said that all food is edible, all food is, is legal, all food, the, the dietary law went away, the ceremonial law kind of went away, the only ceremony we brought into the New Testament, of course, is um, the communion, but anyway, but but there they were, and and they said, look, Jesus said, the di what goes into your body, uh, it's just going to come out, it's not that, he said, what, what I'm concerned about is the heart, I'm concerned about the Heart. That's the moral law. You'll never get away from having to have direction, a moral direction. Without a moral foundation, we have no basis from which to set our laws up, to have no basis whatsoever to, to encourage one another and to protect one another and, and have rights for one another. And it, 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 we need, we need the Ten Commandments desperately. And it's important that, that we realize this code that we have, this law that we have, we need it. It's a moral code that gives us guidance. It's the restrictions. It's actually, it's all wrapped up. Paul said in, in 2 Corinthians, it's all wrapped up in the love of Christ. That love of Christ which morally gives us. And, and here's the thing about the moral law. We, we, we realize that the moral law has three purposes. And we're going to talk about that right now. The three purposes that God gave us the law, Paul says, Paul says in Romans 7, 7, we would not know what sin is without the law. So the law tells us this is what is required of you and that, that sin is when you get in and live in, outside of the law. And then it says that, that the law also exposes sin in us. That Romans 3.20 says we are not made righteous by the law, but we are conscious of the sin that's within us by that law. Okay, so here's what he's setting up. He's setting up, he's setting up these laws. And one thing about these laws is the fact that it exposes us also. And here's the thing that, that I, I just am so thankful that I realized that these laws that God gave within ourselves, we know... We can't do them. <laughs> so what does it do? It shows us that there's sin, what sin is. It shows us that, that it's in us. And then it shows us and, and, and makes us realize that we can't, we need a savior. The Old Testament basically makes us realize that as he keeps that moral code, that moral law, it projects people into the, uh, the realization that we all need a savior. And so it's the law, God says, is, it shows us the right and the wrong within our uh, self. And if we, if we try to keep the law just for the law's sake to get, to get to heaven, we'll become very, very legalistic. 
but, the, but but and so we don't we do we don't get to heaven look we're not getting to heaven because we keep the law we get to heaven because we believe in Jesus Christ as many as receive him to them gives he the power to become the sons of God and to live within the restrictions of God's love and Jesus love so uh, we're saved by we're saved by faith we're saved by grace as we put our faith in Jesus Christ but but because of our faith in Jesus Christ we want to keep these basic codes in our hearts so that we might just live a free life these codes these laws are for our good and they do help us we don't get to heaven by them and because of them we get to heaven because of our faith in jesus but that doesn't set us free from the heart code within our own heart jesus said i want the heart to be set free and and as we go through these we'll we'll uh, be exposed to what he meant by them so look it's an exciting time we'll get into them god bless you see you tomorrow